What's up guys? This video is the second part to my deep work series, so if you missed the first part, be sure to head on over and check that one out, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. In Cal Newport's deep work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World, he defines deep work as professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive capabilities to their limit. These efforts create new value, improve your skill, and are hard to replicate. Basically, deep work is work done in deep focus. The importance of deep work stems from the fact that distractions in our lives pose many negative effects, combined with the fact that we are currently living in an age filled with distraction. The neuroscience from part 1 shows us just how necessary intense concentration can be to learn hard things quickly. But there's even a commonly brought up law of productivity that suggests the following equation. That high quality work produced equates to time spent times the intensity of focus alongside it. Think of low-level players who've put the time in but haven't done much in terms of focusing on how they play. This equation explains much in the way of skill plateaus. With zero focus, any amount of time multiplied by zero will still produce zero high-quality work. On this channel, we've talked about how people plateau because of emotional factors that ultimately hinder your intensity of focus and therefore your high-quality work produced, thus beginning to improve much more slowly. But in this series here, we're going to dive into the problem of not being off focus just because of emotion, but from our daily life distractions that ultimately hinder your potential intense focus. In a 2009 paper, Sophie Leroy, a business professor at the University of Minnesota, explains just how distraction damages your intensity of focus. Through her extensive research, she found a particular negative side effect that occurs when study participants split up their focus through either multitasking or with other distractions. She termed this side effect attention residue. When you switch from task A to another task B, your attention doesn't immediately follow. A residue of your attention is left thinking of the original task. Even if you were to fully complete task A before moving on to task B. Studies show time and time again that by removing distractions like quitting social media or not constantly replying to emails show sharp increases in work output. And when adding in distractions, such as having participants stop their current activity and switch tasks every time a beeper goes off, show sharp declines in overall performance. In a well-cited study, Gloria Mark, a professor of informatics at the University of California, an expert on the science of attention fragmentation, found that an interruption, even if short, delays the total time required to complete a task by a significant fraction. Even if you yourself aren't aware at the time, your brain does respond to distractions. Now I'm sure you've experienced this in your past, but there are times where you could almost lose yourself in an activity and distraction-free focus becomes effortless and time flies by where an hour can pass like minutes. There is actually a name for the state of losing yourself in an activity, which you might have heard of before, and that is flow. Flow is the ideal state to strive for, for easily achieved, undivided attention. And deep work is an activity well suited to generate flow. When you're in a state, enter the state of flow, you're gonna wanna perform a type of work that falls in the flow channel for you. The flow channel is the balance between a task being too easy and being too hard. By practicing deep work, you expand the thickness of your flow channel, minimizing your ability to lose focus when bored or be overwhelmed by the challenge. Cal Newport describes your ability to focus as if it were a muscle 
that it's something you need to train and strengthen. The problem with being able to perform deeply focused work is that we live in a distracted world and intense concentration no longer comes easy. So in part three, we'll finish the series by discussing day-to-day -day strategies to live a less distracted life to strengthen your ability to focus, allowing you to perform the highly concentrated work, that is, deep work, at any given time. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that DK thumbs up and spank that subscribe button if you enjoyed this series. Look forward to the next one, have a swell evening, and I'll see you next time.